Hi, uh, welcome to the session of analysis of hemorrhage and pain, which is also called HP. So this is a case study of a loss making company with strong balance sheet and positive cash flows. So we'll analyze here and uh, try to figure out, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, its valuation and, you know, if it's worth investing or not. So first is the business overview. Uh, so what does uh, Helmerich and Payne they do? Okay, so they are the largest provider of super spec AC drive land rigs. So uh, this is you know used in like um, oil and gas companies. Uh, so basically, if they have they have to drill new uh, wells, they uh, give contracts to these drilling contractors, and Helmerich and Payne is one of them. They are the leading one, and uh, they bring their own rigs, their expertise, and uh, uh, drill wells. So they are the uh, largest one in the Western Hemisphere, and uh, they are specializing in super spec AC drive land rigs. These are uh, very highly sophisticated uh, rigs, which are supposed to be more efficient than the mechanical rigs that uh, people used to use before. And they are operating principally in North and South America, and they specialize in shale and unconventional resource plays, drilling challenging and complex wells in oil and gas producing basins in U.S. and international business. So United States is the primary, and they have a little exposure to to the international uh, locations. Okay. Now, what is uh, the business model of a drilling rig contracting, you know, company? So till recently, rig contractors earned revenue based on daily rates. So they'll ha have their rig, it's just like, you know, uh, let's say you uh, rent any, uh, you know, e uh, equipment from U-Haul or something and you pay daily rate. That meant like, you know, if you have a longer drilling operation, the oil and gas company uh, uh, paid more uh, revenue and vice versa. But Helmerich and Payne is pioneering a new pricing model which is solely based on performance. That means instead of charging their customers on daily rates, they say, okay, if I am able to drill, you know, so much uh, like depth or uh, whatever you need, you're going to pay me no matter how much time it takes. Obviously, I'm sure they'll have a, some kind of a service level agreement. So this is aimed to be a win-win proposition. That means uh, HNP also, the contracting company, uh, figures out efficient ways to drill and the uh, the the customer also, you know, uh, gives a fixed cost and they get a better deal. Okay, so what happened is after the worst crude uh, crab price crash in history, it pummeled the oil industry. The tussle between producers and contractors over the cost to drill and frack wells have taken a greater urgency. So explorers are under increasing uh, pressure to cut spending and return cash to shareholders. So the oil and gas companies are under a lot of pressure and drilling is becoming vastly more efficient as a result. In the Permian Basin of West Texas and New Mexico, home to busiest shale patch in North America, operators are now drilling the same number of wells with 180 rigs as they were with 300 rigs a year ago, according to an industry data provider Leo. Okay, so this only shows efficiency is like really increasing and people are uh, the customers are really pushing for more efficient rigs and Helmerich and Payne argues that while most some producers might bulk at its new pricing model the approach will deliver better value by keeping wells pumping for longer so as an investor in this company I am betting on this so this is the biggest thing that I'm betting is Helmerich and Payne is uh, basically changing uh, you know uh, it's 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 leading the way the contractors are going to deliver their services in future and it's going to benefit from it. okay so now let's uh, analyze uh, the first thing is obviously the balance sheet okay so we will we will go and look at uh, its latest 10q report okay that has the balance sheet and first uh, so here you can look into the financial statements and consolidated balance sheets and we'll come down and look at it. So this is as of June 30, 2021. Okay, so here you can see its overall assets were four point around four and a half billion dollars and the overall liabilities, current liabilities and the non-current liabilities if you add 
is about so 265 plus 1222 is about uh, 1.6 billion dollars okay so this makes its book value uh to be around 3 billion dollars okay so if you do assets minus liabilities the book value also let's look at the long term debt is about 480 million dollars and if you add the cash and the short term investments so about 370 plus 180 is 550 about 550 some million so if you think about it so they have enough cash and short term investments to pay off all the long term debt which is kind of a very good sign that means uh, their balance sheet is pretty strong there is also another uh, thing uh, that uh, we can uh, validate this so this is the moody's this is a great credit rating agency um, i go and refer to them uh, a lot and here they gave uh, in february this year their opinion about it so they have they completed a periodic review of ratings of this thing uh, Almerit and pink and other ratings and the review was conducted through a portfolio review and the pub uh, and Henrich uh, uh, they gave a BAA1 rating, so which reflects its strong balance sheet. So here you can see they are state. They are also stating that the uh, the company's balance sheet is strong, including a low debt level and excellent liquidity. That means they will not have any liquidity issues. That means they'll have enough cash to weather through even some tough business environments. High quality AC recs have uh, uh, historically commended premium rates under long-term contracts and a leading and diversified market position in u.s management's consistent track record of conservative financial policies so this is uh, this is also another good thing that you know validates their uh, proposition that the balance sheet is strong so now let's look at the historical uh, uh, like you know uh, uh, results of the company so what i did is I went and got all the income statements from 1992 till present and I tabulated here okay then I went and got all the cash flow statements I tabulated from uh, like 1992 till present and uh, put it in an excel sheet like this okay so this is still 2020 here okay and then obviously the balance sheet I, I went and they, you know looked at it from uh, again 1993 till here and then I took all that data the main data and put it here so that I can see what's going on so the first thing that we consider is the cash flows that means from their beginning from whatever like you know uh, data we have from 1992 onwards till uh, 2020 Overall, if you add the cash flow from operations, they generated $13.1 billion and they put back around 11.38. So that means the free cash that they generated was around 1.8 billion. And this is the cumulative one. So it shows as of that year, how much was it? So if you can see, it's just last six years, they actually have really become more conservative and uh, they have been conserving their cash and they obviously have more focus towards their drilling operations and their all their free cash flow has come out of since 2014. so this is a good sign that the company is very focused in um, you know generating cash then let's look at the balance sheet here so obviously in uh, the 90s the company was pretty small and they their overall assets were 610 million and their total liability was 100 million and 509 million was their book value and the multiple was six and obviously it it, it kept growing but i think in 2014 uh, 15 time period it was the biggest but then it uh, it kept coming down so they they kind of tried to like you know sell a few things they also had asset impairments which is pretty understandable because uh, you know the uh, oil market and all they went through so different cycles and currently they have 4.8 billion dollars in assets and uh, we also see the liability and uh, the multiple is about 3.2 so the second thing is how much they are generating cash flow from the assets this is around 11 percent currently which was high uh, at certain points obviously when the gas prices were high and you know they were uh, more people were looking for rigs so their rates went up 
but uh, this also shows that they are still able to command pretty good uh, you know uh, rate over on their uh, like you know uh, assets like the amount of cash they generate over the assets so all these things if you look around they kind of you know bring to a position that the company is uh, well managed it is its balance sheet is strong and based on all these things, I have valued the company to be around seven billion dollars, and with around um, you know uh, to about one hundred and seven million dollars of uh, one hundred and seven million share uh, shares outstanding, I'm valuing it around sixty five dollars a share. Okay, so uh, so the overall value is um, again let's assume seven billion okay and uh, shares outstanding is 107 million so if i divide uh, this guy to this guy it comes 65 dollars 65 per share okay so uh the, based on that and obviously the company was uh, the selling at um, you know the stock was selling at around uh, 26 dollars uh, a change so decided to buy it and uh, plan to hold on to it and uh, you know let's see how it goes so i uh, hope you uh, you found this video useful and you uh, can understand like you know as a case study like how to analyze a loss making company that has strong balance sheet and positive cash flows um, uh, thank you and uh, any questions you have, uh, I'll be happy to answer. So you can uh, 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 like email uh, <clears throat> me at uh, dan d underscore menashi at yahoo.com. Thanks and have a nice day.